So welcome back, everyone, to the Integral European Conference. In this workshop, we will be hearing from um, Michael Book, Heidi Hornlin, Ines Roberts, and they will be talking about the Integral Salons and the Service of Co-Evolution. Um, I'm inviting you to offer greetings into the chat and include the place you are writing in from. Our, our presenters today. Ines Roberts is the founder of the Integral Salon in Lubeck, an active member of the Integral Forum EV, where she facilitates the Circle of Salons, serves as rep link cultural and organizational development, and leads a project on digital collaboration. She works as a coach, consultant, trainer, and speaker in the field of conscious leadership, corporate culture, and change, a core question that fascinates and guide, guides her is, what moves people? Michael Gluck organizes monthly online meetings of German-speaking Integral Salon leaders in the Integral Forum as secretary. He hosts the Integral Salon München, which is ISAM, and experiments with community building in an online meeting called WeLab. He is fascinated by the higher we and the question, how can we intelligence be raised? Heidi Hornlin is part of the German speaking integral community for more than 20 years. She has been holding online events for some time now through her wisdom factory where she creates recorded interviews and has women's circles and integral salons. So before we begin, let us take a moment to take in those of us who are present today. Open yourself to curiosity and look at everyone who is here today. Take a moment to connect with everybody who is present with us. We are 19 people so far. And I would now like to hand the mic, the talking stick, over to the team. Welcome. Thank you, Janet, for your kind introduction. Yeah, very warm welcome to this workshop also from our behalf. Um, we're delighted to have some time with you together here now and look forward to get into fruitful discussions with you on the meaning and magic of integral salons. Heidi will start with a brief introduction. So what is a salon and how did they develop historically? And then Michael, Heidi and I have three topics prepared to provide you with different perspectives on salon work. And um, Michael will, will invite he, um, you to his breakout room about we practice. Now. In Heidi's room, you can engage in co-creative dialogue and mine is around integral onboarding. Um, so you will soon have the possibility to choose one of these topics and enter the respective breakout room. And after 30 minutes or so in separate groups, we all come back to the plenum, do some harvesting, and then yeah, you can take care of your growling stomach. Um, well, at least that goes for the European folk. <laughs> okay, so let's get it on. And I thought um, it would be nice to bring a brief opening method from our own salons here. As you probably know, awareness is a crucial element in integral theory and practice. So we would like to try out one of the one minute exercises from the book Integral Life Practice called the Quadrant Scan. Any one of you know this exercise? So raise your hand. No, well, that's good. Um, so we go through the four quadrants and we start with the top left, uh, the I quadrant around consciousness. And my question to you is, what are you thinking, feeling, appreciating right now? And just take a few seconds and then type in one word in the chat so we all gain an impression. Okay. Oh. Thank you very much. And then we go to the top right quadrant, the it quadrant around behavior. 
And here the question is, um, what are your options to act in this session? What can you contribute? Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to the bottom left, the we quadrant around culture. And the question here is, how can you connect with the other participants? How can you establish a relationship? Thank you. And we turn to the bottom right quadrant, the it's system structure. And the question here is, how do you find your way through this virtual conference? Okay, thank you very much. Beautiful. So I hope we're all really arrived here now and um, I hand over to Heidi. Yeah, thank you. And also for me, a very, very heartfelt welcome. I'm so glad that so many of you are here so we can actually do three breakout rooms with the three topics because we feared that would be only five people or something, So, but they are not. So I want to give you a little bit of an introduction of salons and integral salons. And I looked into Wikipedia and there's a definition. I gathered it a little bit. It's a gathering of artists, writers, musicians, also scientists and other groups of common interests. And they are taking place often in private houses and have a modest number of participants and they are led by inspiring hosts. I hope we will be able to do that. So now when we look into the history of salons, we notice that they are very often held by women. For women, it has been the possibility to take part in the culture and also to learn when they invited uh, like musicians or philosophers and so on into their houses. There were famous salons uh, in Paris, Paris by Sophie Marie Louise de Grouchy, Marquise de Condorcet. I hope I uh, said that right. There was in Berlin, uh, Henriette Julie Hertz, and in Vienna, Franziska Fanny von Arnstein, and they were all around 1800s. But that's not when salons uh, came up into the world. Uh, they were also long before. Aspasia von Milet in 470 BC, she founded a ph philosophical salon where she also spoke. She not only invited guests to speak there. And also the mysteries of Elysium and the Oracle of Delphi, they were held by women. And also the Paleo-Christian uh, first communities, uh, the house churches, but also then in the catacombs, they were held by women. And in the list afterwards, I give you also a wonderful book which is speaking about that. And so we see that the integral salons are a continuation of a long tradition. And also we have many women leaders, I have to say. And um, new rituals and, and practices are addressed. And they are connected with the work of Ken Wilber. Uh, in the German-speaking countries in the late 19th, the first reading circles established where people came together to, to read the books of Ken Wilber and to talk about it. In the early 2000s, the Integralis Forum was founded uh, in order to gather all the initiatives which appeared in, in many places. And they organized and are still organizing uh, yearly meetings and conferences and they published the Integrale Perspektiven uh, journal with Wilpers text uh, translated into German, but also other uh, articles. I wanted to invite Monika Frühwert. She was one of the founders uh, to talk about this. Uh, she also has a salon in Vienna for more than 20 years but she didn't want to come uh, here, but I had an interview with her. And so you can, if you are interested, it's in English, you can uh, go to the Wisdom Factory and look it up. And I wanted also to say, uh, Ben Zaganti once in, I think 2012 or something, he came to the Integralist Forum to a conference and from there started to create the European initiative. And from there he created these conferences where we are now. 
Uh, the integral salons emerged in many, many places to spread, spread the integral worldview. This is, I think, the main connection thing we have, and also the life practice, as we had an uh, example by Ines to, to get into a felt sense of what the quadrants are. Many salons are part of the Integralis Forum, but there are also other salons which have no direct connection with Integralis Salons. Integralis Forum, sorry. Um, the salons are very, very, very different uh, in what they are doing. It depends on the leading team, and they might emphasize more theory or more practical ways. Normally, they are once a month, they have a given topic, or they are creating the topic in a free-flowing conversation. The leadership is volunteer work. Uh, the participants often pay a little bit, but not really a lot, just to pay the rent or the, the costs. So as, an, as I saw somebody wants to create a salon in Denmark, you might start to do that too, because I don't know if you want to spread uh, the, the message then we, if we start to immediately ask money, a lot of money for that, I don't know. That's not my orange way of doing it. Anyway, I have created a, a page which I will put in, or also um, Janet can put it into the chat, where you will find useful information. There's some books, but also uh, the salons in the German speaking countries, also the interviews, also with Michael, I already did an interview about his salon, but also as far as I got uh, aware of English speaking uh, salons. And if you know others, please send them to me. So in the final version, I will integrate that too in the list of, of the addresses. And this is a very, very short overview, but we want more practice than uh, listening to these things. So I give over to Michael. He wants to talk a little bit about the principles of his work in his salons. So over to you. Thank you, Heidi, for the introduction. As host of the Integral Salon in Munich, the field of V is important to me. As soon as we meet in a group, this field comes into existence. I can feel it, but can hardly influence it. Where can I start? In the next five minutes, I illuminate the developmental line of re-intelligence through the stages traditional to modern to pluralistic to integral, as outlined from Prabhupada and Dipana in the in the eternal mystery of vSpace. In my breakout room later, I share with you the, compo the components of community building and repractice. All of us have the native capacity to develop sensitivity to collective fields. And with practice, we can all learn to cultivate an increased level of awareness to that which is emerging within, within groups of people. As we intelligence deepens, there's a broadening of awareness that increasingly takes into, into consideration the perspectives of others. When we are at the traditional ember altitude of development, the perspective of others are highly influential for our own behavior. We can call this stage social conformity. As growth along the V-intelligence line unfolds, the individual continues to reflect the signals of others, reflect the signals and perspectives received from the surrounding environment, while also gaining the capacity to recognize his or her own sense of perception from the self-conscious needs of the ego. As this occurs, the individual can stay connected to the flow of conversation and be in resonance with a group field while simultaneously offering his or her own unique perspective. We can call this stage 
of the intelligence uh, so social agency or orange altitude. Deeper stages of the intelligence begin to show even greater capacity for perspective taking as individual agency and collective sensitivity remain in place, re-intelligence allows the individual to gain the capacity to hold a larger context outside the immediate circumstances of the group. There's a deepening awareness and sensi sensitivity to time, place, and culture. One can maintain contact with the local we, while simultaneously expanding the horizon of awareness to larger and larger fields. At this stage, there is a heightened sensitivity to the specifics of the others in the group. Having capacity to feel larger contextual influences brings a universal quality to the experience that deepens empathy, intimacy, and care for each member of the collective. We can call this stage context, contact sensitivity or green altitude. As, develop, as development continues along the spectrum of growth, re-intelligence begins to show signs of a more comprehensive orientation that transcends and includes the reference points of self, other, and context. This means that the capacity to hold deeper context and contact that unfolded in the previous stage, while the individual also develops a heightened meter cognition that is able to sense into the collective experience as a whole. This level of holistic sensitivity can see sense and feel the intersubjective field almost as if it's a single entity. There's a singular shared experience emerging. At this stage, the we itself enters the foreground and experience of experience while the other aspects of experience enter the background. We can call this stage holistic sensitivity or teal altitude. I in, invite you to this V space. Thank you. I give to uh, Heidi. She talks about um, co-creative dialogue. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's a very brief introduction. We come together and figure out what we want to talk about. And we talk about it with certain uh, principles, which I will then uh, present when we are in the breakout room. And I give over to Ines. I hope you can hear me because uh, here's actually a thunderstorm happening, so it's quite loud. Um, yeah, in my breakout session, I'd like to briefly introduce you to my own integral salon in Lübeck, that's in Northern Germany. and. Um, if you have any further questions around salon work, then I'll be very happy to answer them. And subsequently, I'd like to invite you to a discussion around integral onboarding. And by that, I mean, like someone shows an interest in integral stuff and wants to know more. So what do you do? And I'd love to exchange thoughts on that. And maybe you had an interesting onboarding experience yourself. Um, so I'd like to know, how was your first contact with Integral? What drew your attention? What made you stick to it? Uh, was it a story, a change in perspective, a book, a person, a crisis, an event? And um, yeah, I'm really interested in your experiences, anecdotes. And also I'd love to uh, spend some time around the question, um, what are the challenges of Integral onboarding? Uh, so no heavy theoretical input with me. Uh, if you're looking for an easy and very practical oriented exchange and you're in the mood to actively participate, then I'm looking forward to seeing you in my breakout room. Okay, Janet, yeah, then I hand over to you, yeah? Yeah, so wonderful. Um, I have set up three uh, rooms. I'll be opening all the rooms. So we have the first with uh, We Practice with um, Mikael 
Second is integral onboarding with Innes, and third is co-creative dialogue with Heidi. Each of you get to choose which room you'd like to participate in. Thank you, Janet, for hosting us. Yeah, so welcome back, Mikael, Innes, and Heidi. So we can share some insights, some experiences from the breakout rooms in the plenum. Maybe we were just four people, four men, and maybe one of my fellow men want to share something with the plenum. You can unmute. Hi, Hello. Nino. Hi, Michael. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm honored to share my, my thoughts and experience. Um, and I would like to start from the beginning. Um, as Michael was explaining to all of us um, the stages of um, awareness in the we space, in my head, I started to have a concept of expectations about what this breakout room would be about, um, how we are gonna be going through that process collectively. Um, and, um, and as I have hesitated to enter the room, I, I first saw that Michael was there alone for a while and I was just thinking, should I go in or should I choose another room? And then I saw that Alejo is there and I just jumped in. Um, and then Dries joined us as well. Um, so these are our four, four WeSpace people. Um, and um, as soon as we started, I could notice that there's quite a lot of input happening um, personally for me, um, especially from Alejo, his, uh, his way of um, presenting information was a bit um, too fast paced, let's say. And um, um, at the same time, that also was something that allowed me to distance myself from my expectations about what will happen. Um, and what happened actually was something mind blowing. Um, a, a depth of, let's say, um, span of awareness um, and the complete flow of whatever emerges um, in, in a very um, open and allowing way. Um, and we also had um, Alejo leave us for a while while leaving the sound on, which gave that space another dimension or another expansion. Um, so it was really a, a very broad uh, awareness space. Um, that's, that's, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nino. <laughs> Maybe Dries, you want to, to sh uh, share down th something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. For me, it was also an interesting experience. Uh, yeah, at first I was a bit struggling uh, because I couldn't hear uh, Alejo very well, um, and then yeah, after he, yeah, he got uh, some company and, and he left his sound on. Uh, it was also, a bit, um, yeah, a bit. Um, Difficult to, to hear what, what was going on, but but uh, yeah, uh, I was really um, encouraged by by Nino. Uh, he he was so, so being in the moment and, and just uh, enjoying what was happening, and and I was uh, yeah also attracted by that. Uh, so I yeah, find it an interesting experience. Uh, what was happening in the in the wee space? Thank you. Thank you, Trees. So um, I hand over to Ines. Um, maybe from your group, somebody want to share something. I would I wouldn't mind sharing from Ines' group. Uh, if it's okay for the others. I, I've just been listening to the group because um, 
there was so much uh, being said, so I just uh, kept listening. And uh, um, just to summarize quickly, don't want to talk lots about other people, but the main focus was on what's happening in the Lübeck Saloon, and um, which is a very fresh one and lots of acti activities happening there. Uh, and uh, then it boiled down in the end to um, <laughs> kind of an assessment uh, discussion. How, how do, does one um, go about with the onboarding of new members if it's really members, I, I don't know any saloon where you would put down a signature or anything, but uh, it, it was a bit hard to get into uh, get new people into uh, into a group uh, that might not be so well informed about integral theory. In my view, that's now out of box because uh, that's what I was thinking. Um, I, I'm part of the uh, Cologne Saloon and um, I've been taking part actively for 10 years now and they've been working for 15 years and it's been a growing, um, expanding and, and condensing uh, over the years and uh, I never really experience that we need rules for assessment. Uh, it, it's um, rather that um, the the whole working integral well, waking up cleaning up and everything is is already an assessment itself because it's a process of growing and and cleaning and whatever and so we've got all different kinds of integral techniques that do their own work so there so there's no need for a set uh, assessment anything of that sort yeah that's just from my perspective from the listener side. Thank you. Thank you, Caro. Um, another voice from the onboarding breakout room. So every question, questions are solved. <laughs> Great work, Ines. So um, the room with uh, Heidi, co-creative dialogue. Maybe yeah. we can hear we, some. I want first say we uh, co-creative dialogue normally as well as we space needs a little bit of time. And so we had a limited time. And so it went at a certain moment, I, I interfered because otherwise the others uh, wouldn't have uh, enough uh, space to talk. But I wanted to say, this is only a, a taste of what we are, what is possible in a, in a salon. No? And normally you, you, at least my salons, they have enough time, everybody to, to talk and I, I wouldn't interfere in this way. But it was very, very interesting. I, at the first, uh, we were with me five and then four people. And uh, I give over to, I saw Sherry, do you already have unmuted yourself before? Do you want to say something? Sure, I just... Uh so enjoyed our small group and hearing the, the, the lovely voices of um, particularly Marjorie and Tina who were participating and, uh, and just the opportunity to, to be together and to hear different experiences and different um, ideas and different struggles and um, yeah, just it was just a lovely opportunity to be and to um, experience these uh, for me new faces and um, and uh, yeah and and I'm wondering you know what what is the best way to to progress. Thank you. Marjorie, you look like you wanted to say something. <laughs> thank you. I think, uh, thank you for what you, you were sharing, um, Sheree. 
and uh, Heidi uh, about our group. And I, it was a very active, we, we, we took every minute, we were speaking the whole time very quickly. And, and uh, so some of the things I think that were coming up, at least for me, was, you know, the, the desire to sort of, it's sort of a paradox between the desire of wanting to, you know, seek what is emerging from the future while also wanting to include uh, that which is the, you know, good, true, and beautiful from the past and the present as we go into the future so that hopefully we can avoid or at least alleviate some of the, what seems like an inevitable backlash as you go forward, you do need to include um, the lower stages of development, for example, what is important to the traditional people and uh, or people who are at that level or that aspect of ourselves that is at that level. So it's just interesting to hold the paradox of, of wanting to go forward, but also finding that which is uh, important to carry from the past into the future. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I've seen that Tina has given you a heart. So I wonder <laughs> Tina, if you want to come up to, or is, is the heart the main expression of what was going on? If you want to, otherwise I give over to you, Michael, again. No, she's coming, huh? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I just wanted to thank everyone for co-creating the space. I thought it was very valuable because we didn't really have any expectations going into it. And the conversation kind of just organically emerged. And then I thought that the feeling of resonance and connection that we had through the organic unfolding of the conversation and the topics I thought that was particularly powerful. And then um, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for co-creating the space. And I'm sorry if I was a little domineering over it at times. Um, like Heidi said, if we had more time, then I think it would have led to an organic natural conclusion where we all could have connected at the same space. Um, but because with working within the limitations of what we had to, then I think that it kind of just felt like, wow, we're so connected and then, doop, okay, bye everyone. <laughs> so I think that that just speaks to the importance of having these recurring saloons, salons, um, I might be saying that wrong, um, but yeah, just to develop that unfolding over time with the same group of individuals so that you could really, take in what their experiences are and then use that as the input to kind of synthesize with your own experiences and then the output is something that's greater than any individual so then thank you for that <laughs> thank you the purpose of our uh, our group here is um, to get a taste of uh, how can the longs um, emerge in your city or where you can participate or even become a salon leader. Maybe we can just uh, make this uh, with the last um, 10 minutes to share um, possibility to, possibilities to create new salons or to connect to each other. So unmute and um, we can discuss. Cordula, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say how touched I am to take from this meeting that the, the colorfulness. Now we have Ines and Michael and Heidi here who are so different. And I'm, I'm really heartwarmed how completely different you run your salons and doing a wonderful work. And then all the other people here we met and just imagining each of you has their own true potential and personality and call. And, and if that stands, you know, with the courage to be a leader, I mean, I feel really remembered, reminded how much courage it takes to say, I'm starting this, I'm providing this space. I invite you, I mean, I'm not a salon lead, but I'm just saying, um, to show up and to create that space, to have the courage and not to worry so much about the rules. 
normally talk to us about her immense experience um, with Jeff. Um, thank you so much, Normali. Um, I know you've probably done more than all of us or most of us in that work. And, and it's so beautiful to just see that everyone tries their best and shows up and is their true own unique self in that moment. So, and if all of that gets together, I mean, I had the vision as, as being um, in the integral forum um, board, how wonderful it would be to bring all these people once a year together in all their colors and all their potentials and the leads of all these salons and just celebrate. So I'm taking out of this group, not worry so much about, did you get the integral theory right? Or what is the developmental line of each person? But um, to celebrate that coming together and sharing and exploring and creating spaces for that. So thank you very much for this group and this wonderful morning. It's been very uplifting for me. Thank you, Cordula. So I, I feel our vSpace is emerging. It's, it's very hard to say something after Cordula's statement because <laughs> it's so beautiful rounding up the session. So thank you, Cordula. Um, just maybe um, to give in what motivates me to run a salon. Um, what I thought in the beginning was that I want to develop and to be honest, I'm not even sure whether I care that it's called inter integral. I just want to learn and I need other people to do that. And I also know that other people who want to learn and develop need me. And so I thought that's great. And just by coincidence, I stumbled over the association integral forum and I thought, yeah, Salon, that's just such a great space to open up here in Lübeck. And that's all, that's what I did. And I will now see how far I do this and it'll end sometime. But um, at the moment, it, I just enjoy it. And I enjoy being here and um, yeah, feel this we space, Michael, indeed. So thank you very much. Uh, Istvan, you, you raised your hand. You want to share them, something? Um, yeah, just uh, I have mixed feelings. I I feel really a lot of energy, especially after uh, Cordula's sharing. But also in the same time, I I have a lot of fear. So if I have uh, if I would like to start uh, such a saloon, for example, in Hungary, in Budapest, then then a lot of uh, questions or problematic areas let's say so come into my mind like uh, like I, as i experienced or i think i experienced that uh, uh, green or level six is very different from the the levels below and also the next one the yellow is very different from green so so i have the fear that these kind of uh, different people how, how can how can they tolerate each other or or <laughs> or sh share the same space I miss now. I miss now the opportunity to to be on the t t other two rooms <laughs> in the same time, you know, <laughs> because I think I was. It would it would add something to to this. And also, I have the fear that you know, as I, I think it's it's just an idea, but if someone goes up on the ladder, uh, they, the motivation to speak is less and less. I think so. So who would like to speak is the orange or the or the or yeah or in 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 some meaning maybe maybe the green to share a lot of feelings but uh but yeah yeah but these are my fears so yes this will happen of course <laughs> but you can only experience it when you you start your group and um when the participants are on 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 several stages, um, it comes to chaos. And then the, the shadow work is starting. And if someone isn't, isn't willing to, to do this shadow work, he will leave, uh, he will leave the group. 
So it's a natural process. But you are in a position of powerlessness. So you, you giving the space and you hold everybody and you, you cannot direct the people. <laughs> so it's a co-creating uh, event. I can share something uh, also. And, you know, I know I've already spoken, so I, I, if there's somebody else that wants to speak, please, you know. Um, but just in terms of uh, what I've been experiencing with the intentional community that I belong to with Terry Patton, uh, New Republic of the Heart. And I guess many of you know that he has shared with us and has shared publicly that he has just recently been diagnosed with lung cancer, very serious. And um, so it really is an opportunity for our community to see this as teacher, which is what Terry is uh, just so beautifully, wonderfully uh, allowing us to to be on this journey with him. And uh, it really brings forward what is most essential. Some of the things that we had thought were important were actually not so important. And yet even, even then the, um, the very mundane things become profound <laughs> and the profound is mundane. And so, I mean, it's just, it's such a beautiful top opportunity to really uh, go through in real time, you know, uh, the fear, the fear of death, fear of dying, fear of loss and along with of course the most beautiful wonderful opportunity to experience together the the wholeness the completeness the the joy the wonder the mystery <laughs> uh, along with the pain and the sorrow and the loss and the grief so it's just um i just wanted to presence that here thank you when we can share our brokenness with the others, so this the room of we space uh, can um, become wider and wider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Slowly, slowly, we are coming to the end of the session, and I gave to the word to Janet. She leads us out of the session and I wish every, everybody a um, nice conference and I hope I, I see you again. Thank you. So first, it's a, a big, big thank you um, to Michael, Heidi and Ines for a wonderful presentation on the integral salons and in service of co-evolution. Um, you will cert, uh, shortly have an opportunity as a collective um, to uh, thank them. Um, um, once uh, once uh, we've uh, gone into the poll. So we have a poll to rate your experience. Um, if you can uh, pay attention to that now and tend to it. And um, Heidi, uh, if you could just share that uh, Integral Salons document once more, somehow it came out on my end with some kind of an, an end uh, format that I'm enabled to uh, recreate, that would be very helpful. Um, and so I, am, yeah. I also wanted to add, if you are aware of other salons which are already going on, or if you create one, then I can add that to the document and when the recording will be uh, published uh, here in the conference, I can uh, upload the, um, the updated document. So please uh, send it to me. I can put my email, the, the, the easiest one is this one, the other is the Wisdom Factory, which you find on the document also, um, and send it to me the, the information and I can bring it in. Now I put into the chat the document and thank you very, very much, Janet, for leading us through this and everybody who has participated. It's just a joy to, you know, to be together. So the moment that we all wait for is, um, you know, I invite everybody to unmute yourself um, you know, be encircled together and share appreciation for Mikel, Ines, and Heidi. These moments are extraordinary to see uh, once we actually view the recording. So please unmute yourself and words of appreciation. 
can do it all together if you wish. Thank you very much. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you. Opening up. Yeah. 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 Thank you that you have been with us and hopefully you start to create your own little salon. It must not be official yet. Try it out with two or three friends and then go ahead and then sooner or later it will be a salon. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, so, and yes, so, so. <laughs> we have the Facebook group. So if you do have a burning question and if you are following the formation of salons or you know, have additional questions such as that, that Istvan had uh, raised earlier, um, raise them through Facebook um, so others can see and join in and uh, for sure communicate with uh, Heidi, Mikhail, and Ines. Great. Thank you. Um, Thank maybe you. I'll just quick, a quick question from my side. I wanted to know if there's anything like an online salon, something like this experience that is perpetual. Every salon is online at the moment, Nino. Oh, ah, okay. Wow. Super. <laughs> Great. What can we say? <laughs> My salons are in German. <laughs> yeah, the language is, that's a language issue then. Yeah. Yeah. Ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch, ja. Ich muss mehr lernen. Okay. <laughs> Danke. I will send you an invitation. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. And then it's you who needs to create one, you know, in your surrounding <laughs> if it's and english i will join know, yeah we learn by uh, trial and error you know and it's it's a good path to develop oneself so <laughs> i encourage you to do that <laughs> okay see you in some other good moment day, everyone thank you thank you, thank you. see you later bye, bye. thank you bye everyone bye, -bye.